Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do something ooh, well a bit of an experiment for me uh, I'm going to make old-fashioned rabbit pie with bacon So last week my friend Blowing in the West of Ireland sent me a link to an old film, very old film from 1932 on the British Film Institute's archive website uh, and it, you know the kind of precursor of the kind of thing I'm doing now a cooking show on the BBC and uh, well I presume it was on the BBC it was quite odd for a number of reasons one the lady doing the cooking was not allowed to talk and just described as a countrywoman but she can't half wield a knife and uh, then there's a voiceover by an un unnamed lady with the the most dreadful old-fashioned received pronunciation queen's english bbc english accent and not only the accent which is awfully hard to listen to with modern ears but also the the style the way the script was written so she'll say the rabbit is skinned and washed and things like that uh, and yeah it's it's just dreadful so i'm doing an interpretation of that for a modern audience that's you so if you enjoy this video give it a like share subscribe etc and let's first catch our rabbit ingredients for the filling i've got my whole skinned and gutted rabbit I've got 200 grams of bacon lardons, a small handful of uh, fresh flat leaf parsley, a bit of lemon juice, and salt and pepper, and some water. That's it. Then for the pastry, I've got 450 grams of plain all purpose flour, and 125 grams each of butter and lard, and also a teaspoon of salt and some water. So, you know, I said first catch your rabbit. Only kidding, but um, I had quite a job getting hold of this one. I don't actually know anybody who um, goes shooting for these things. So uh, I had to phone around seven different butchers to find one that actually had a, a bunny. <laughs> I've got to not refer to it as a bunny because people get upset. Anyway, um, so here it is. And uh, this is 1.2 kilos and he's still got his... Um, some of his innards, he's got his liver and his uh, kidneys, probably his heart in there. So we'll take those out and chop them up and put them in the stock. And I forgot, two hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> Not surprising I forgot, I would never ever put hard-boiled eggs in a meat pie. I just wouldn't, but anyway, not my recipe. So, yeah, I am, I'm slightly in a quandary because uh, the old filmed recipe is she does things that I just would never do, you know, the boiled eggs. Um, but also, she does it in a pie dish with no pastry on the bottom. And then when it's baked, she pours in some jelly stock uh, and serves it cold. So it just disintegrates because we've got nothing underneath to hold it together. <laughs> and it's, yeah. Uh, so what I'm thinking is I might do two pies. I'll do a small one exactly that method without a bottom just a pastry top uh, and then I'll do another one with a pastry bottom and that, that one will have cold and that will have the jelly stock in it we'll see got to boil these right let's get the uh, things in it <laughs> I'm assuming by now that any vegetarians will have left Okay, lovely stuff. Right, now I have never actually dismembered a rabbit before, so if I make a mess, I'm just learning. In the video, they didn't actually say whether to get the bones out or, or not. It just said, the rabbit is chopped into small pieces. There you go. Go back in half an hour. Okay, this isn't as hard as I thought it might be. Um, these are the bits of flat from underneath the, the two legs and the two arms, wings, four legs. And this is, um, I think these are the loin chops. 
there was a time when rabbit was a lot more popular than chicken. It wasn't, you know, uh, it, it could have worked out that instead of a chicken in every pot, it would have been a rabbit in every pot. But I uh, don't know what happened. Right, I think I've got all I can off um, these bits. That's the rib cage and the, the spine. Put those in my stock pot and now debone the legs. Look like they've got quite a bit of meat on them. I, I couldn't get a whole lot of uh, meat off the, the forelegs, but it's okay. It'll give flavour to the stock. So I've got this much, which is quite a lot. I'm just going to weigh it. Okay, 628 grams, and that was a 1.2 kilo rabbit. So half of it is actual edible meat. So I'll put the rabbit meat and the bacon and the offal in the fridge. I'm not going to put the offal in the stock because you can do a better thing. Just give it the same kind of treatment as devil kidneys and serve it on toast. And um, it's wonderful, apparently. So here's my flour, teaspoon of salt, quick mix, and then chop your fat into small bits. And then rub the fat into the flour with your fingertips and keep on going until you've got something that looks like fine breadcrumbs. And now we add water a bit at a time. And we just want to add enough so that it holds the dough together in a bowl. And I think I might have overdone it. Well, no, actually that was um, just about right. So I'm just going to wash this bowl out and um, mix up the filling. And then we can figure out if, if I've got enough to fill two deep pies like that. Just need to chop the parsley quite finely. Mix the rabbit, the bacon, parsley, a teaspoon of salt and pepper and lemon juice. Don't ask what happened to the real lemon. Actually it was a lime and I cheated with the colour because uh, I forgot to get a lemon and a bit of water and your granny's wooden spoon so yeah I find it odd about this filling mixture that um, there's no onion or shallot there's no stock until the end and it's raw the only time I ever do a pie with raw meat in the filling to start with is uh, pork pies so I guess, you know, the jellyfied version of this will be like a pork pie, but, um, yeah, the other one, no. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I think we've got plenty there for two pies, so what to do? Right, roll out the pastry. Now, first, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius for a fan oven, a convection oven. That's 200 for a conventional one, and that is gas. I should write this down somewhere. Seven. Okay, flour on your worktop, and uh, I'm just gonna take about a third. We'll do the not a real pie first, the one that doesn't have a pastry bottom. So, roll it out, about four or five millimeters, um, quarter of an inch-ish. I'm gonna cut around slightly larger than the dish because it doesn't have a flat rim on the top. You're gonna have to pretend that it does. And we're, we're going to make a faux rim with uh, pastry. This isn't quite in the original recipe, but something similar is. So get your pastry strip, stick it on with water. All right, the second one, I buttered the inside so that the pastry bottom hopefully won't stick. I'll just roll out the top and cut that out. And then you want a larger piece of pastry for the base. Roll it over your rolling pin, unroll it over your dish. And grab a spare bit of dough and use that to push the pastry down to the bottom of the dish. And that way you avoid ripping it with your lovely manicured fingernails. We want this to kind of stretch into shape, uh, you know, we're not folding it in with creases or anything horrible like that. There we go, quite a lot of pastry left over, so um, trim off the major excess. 
not all of it, we still want to leave a rim. Okay, so I'm going to fill this one first. And we want to make a big hole in the top of the lid for this one with um, a funnel. And that's to let the steam escape and so we can pull the stock in at the end. I'll fill this one first because this, this really does have to be full to the brim. Uh, the other one particu doesn't particularly need that. Moisten the edge, cold water, and pop the lid on. And we're not actually crimping this as I would normally. Now I'm trimming off the excess. So the rim and the top are the same and we get a kind of square edge. There's a reason for that, I'll show you in a minute. It would be easier if there was a physical rim on this pie dish, but there isn't. And then, a thing that I've never seen before, the, the lady in the, in the film, she feathers the edge better than I'm doing it. All I can think of is, is to make it look a bit like puff pastry. What else would it be? I don't know. Now let's fill the other one. Well, I needn't have worried about uh, the amount of filling. There's exactly the right amount. Clever me. Uh, but this one, we're going to have the boiled eggs. I don't know. This would, it's probably um, just to make the, the protein go further. Okay, moisten the edge and bung the lid on that one and do the same feathering thing. And if you like, you can use some of the spare pastry to you know, make some leaves, decoration. I'm not, because I'm running out of time. But I will, uh, I'll freeze that and use it for something else because there's quite a good chunk of pastry left over. Now, glaze the top with uh, beaten egg and your feathery edges as well. And those go in the oven for 25 minutes at the high temperature. And then we'll turn it down to 120 Celsius for a fan oven. That's 140 for a conventional one. And that is gas one. And then cook it for another two hours. Uh-huh. Right, let's um, get the stock going. So first of all, we want some veggies. I've got a couple of small onions, a stick of celery, and a couple of small carrots. So roughly chop those and I've also got a marrow bone and my rabbit bones. I was trying to get a pig's trotter but I uh, couldn't. <laughs> so I'll just dot those with some lard. You could use you know oil or dripping or you know any, any kind of fat whatever. And put the rest of your bones in. And we're just going to roast these for about 20 minutes at a high temperature. So the bones and veggies have roasted for a bit and now we're going to pop them in the pressure cooker. And add some parsley and some black peppercorns and some bay leaves and then top it up with water, bring it to the boil, bring it under pressure and give it half an hour. You can do this in a conventional saucepan but you probably want to give it two hours at least. I've depressurised the pan so I can take the lid off safely and then strain the vegetables through a colander into a saucepan and that liquid needs to be reduced to about a quarter so slap it on really high heat. So the stock's reduced actually only by about a half. Now I'm going to taste it and it definitely needs salt so add a teaspoon of salt and taste it again. And now I'm just going to strain it through a piece of muslin cheesecloth and it's really late so I'll we'll finish that off in the morning. Okay, it's the next morning. Uh, I've had a little play with the pie and released it from the pot but I'm going to keep it in there while we add the gelatin. Now, in theory, a good old funnel in the hole will do the job. But um, because this is so tightly packed, it doesn't look to me like there's any room to get any gelatin in. However, there will be around the edges. So, flavour injector. I reduced the stock a bit more and um, cooled it down last night and defatted it. And I just heated it up again. So I've got powdered gelatin 
and I'm going to use half of this sachet and that's equivalent to two leaves of gelatin gelatin right I need some warm water and we'll just sprinkle a bit in stir that we need it to dissolve in this hot water otherwise it won't work doesn't want to okay there it is I just gave it three 10 second blasts in the microwave stir it in between each one um, so that's worked it's important that you don't let it boil otherwise that won't work either <laughs> all right so we'll just pour that into the hot stock and now well I'll try the funnel see if I can get anywhere with that Okay to have a bit of jelly on the top. Actually, if you like the jelly, this is one of those things like Marmite, you love it or you hate it, and um, I happen to love it, so as I'm pumping the stock in, yeah, it's coming out the middle hole. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so we leave that to cool down and set and then we'll taste test it. Right, I reckon the pies are done, so let's get them out. And I'm not going to finish off the jellied one until tomorrow, but we can certainly have a go at this one. Fake pie. <laughs> Smells amazing. Oh, look, here's my egg. <laughs> my boiled egg falling apart. And now, it's taste test time. Taste test time, babe. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. With. Goodness, she's keep cooked. She's here, she's here. <laughs> With Mrs. Keith Cook. She's here, she's here. Is that a song? No. Rabbit. Cool. See, I was in the next room, so I've, I've, I've been hearing you building up to this. Looking forward to hours this. And hours, hours and hours and hours. hours. Well, I've watched the video. Have you? Oh yes, and now I get to... Oh, the old film. The old film. Mm. I have to say that woman's voice just about gave me an anxiety attack. <laughs> but if, if you're doing this, that's fine. <laughs> the pie is delicious. Mmm. It's all right. Well, the rabbit is. Oh yeah. I don't think it's the most appetising looking meat, is it? Mm. That sort of... Some of this rabbit Pickle. is bacon, by the way. Mm-hmm. F rabbit. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, as a combination. And if it's... When it's cold, did I... Did I hear her say it sets... Yeah. That the liquid turns well, to jelly? To the one tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So did you make your own pastry? Babe. Tell me. Of course I did. Good. Because <laughs> I have to say, it's really good. I thought for a minute, with all you had to do, you might have um, gone and got shop bought pastry. No. Oh well, still got to make your own then. <laughs> mm. You've always got to make your own. It's easy. Mm. <laughs> oh, and there's all this slightly doughy pastry stuck to the side. Well, that's another pleasure of home cooking, isn't it? Licking the bowl. I'm not proposing to lick the Only the this. cook gets to do. <laughs> All right then. It's much better than it was in black and white. <laughs> Everything tastes better in colour. <laughs> I could do it in black and white. Anyway, that's nice. um, so that's it for today, but we'll be back tomorrow. With the other one. With the other one. And now it's taste test time, part two. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> Johnny. Is that a knife in your hand or? No. Wow, that looks splendid. Cool. It's quite different from the hot one, isn't it? That was more pastry. <laughs> no, but also, you know, with the hot one, it just sort of 
falls apart as you spoon it out. That's beautifully this set. Is set solid. Yeah. yeah. I do love a bit of pastry. Oh, hi, hi, darling. Uh -huh. I've just got home. How about this for coming home, huh? <laughs> cool. That works. <laughs> I had some of the um, the hot pie. Cold. And I found it too salty. This is not so salty somehow. But it was mm. the same batch, wasn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's possibly with the hot pie that the juice sort of soaked into the pastry and everything. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah. That was very nice hot yesterday, but I prefer this as the... This as a cold version is better than the, uh, mm. the hot pie cold, if you see what I mean. Gosh, I wish I hadn't started saying this. <laughs> mm. It's good. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm. You can't let put it down, can you? <laughs> well, I have. Mm. Okay. Right. Grab your pie. Try it. <laughs> see you Thank you time. for watching. Oh, yeah. Sorry. And see you next time. Ooh, mustard. Yes, please. Oh, no. Mm.